All right, this is David Coe, CEO of uh, Intest Biomedical. Today uh, I have Dr. Eva Carrier with me, and uh, she is an associate professor of stem cell transplantation at UCSD. I also have uh, Dr. Thomas Hickam from Metastem. He's the CEO of Metastem and a collaborator with us. And we're going to cover uh, several topics in stem cells today, none the least of which will be the use of uh, laser technology in treating COPD, uh, also cord, use of cord blood, and stem cell mobilization. So, morning guys. Good morning, morning. David. <laughs> So today, um, I thought I would uh, throw this out to uh, to uh, Dr. Carrier first. We wanted to get into a little bit of discussion. There's a lot of uh, people that have interest in cord blood banking and use of cord blood uh, as far as a stem cell uh, uh, vehicle. And I wanted to uh, to find out as a clinician and a researcher where you see the benefits in using cord blood uh, in treating patients. Well, the benefits are enormous because um, specifically for children, um, we've shown that in, in, in thousands of children already that it's very beneficial to transplant leukemia and lymphoma, non immune disorders. The number of cord blood cells uh, from one baby is not enough to transplant. And so we need to look for different technologies to enhance homing of cord blood to the bone marrow uh, so we can perform this transplant. So the advantage is that for example, if I'm looking for donor, if I have patients with leukemia that requires transplant, uh, from an unrelated donor, adult, I need to have six out of six match, or ten out of ten match. Yeah. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Okay. With cord blood, I can only have half match, so like three out of six. So more patients can have actual donor, but the number of cells that has to be calculated per kilogram body weight is not enough. The frequency we have to use two or three babies cells to, to do successful transplants. If we don't give enough cells, then we have a relapse. The disease comes back. So we need to look for technologies where we will enhance homing of cord blood cells to the bone marrow. Okay. And mobilization of homing, specifically homing. If there is a better homing and they engraft better, then we won't need perhaps to give that many uh, cells. Well, let me ask this. So so when you talk about, talk about uh, stem cell homing, um, I'm assuming that uh, the things like uh, uh, potentially what chemokines and uh, and uh, uh, maybe the use of lasers could uh, could help with the homing. Yeah, there's some uh, some uh, chemicals uh, that can help, and um, America Stem Cell is developing this right now, core blood specifically. Um, it's a, it's, a, it's a it's a procedure that enhances. Uh, changes the membrane of the cord blood cells and enhances their ability to home to the bone marrow. The, and, 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 you know, it, it remains to be seen if it's effective. Um, and there are some, several other agents like this, but the question is if we could find something that is um, not expensive, readily available to enhance this ability of, of cells to go to the bone marrow, and, and laser may be one of those, because I'm aware of some data that shows that cells actually upregulate some adhesion molecules on the membrane, as special proteins on the membrane, and uh, possibly can enhance migration. We don't know. We have to look into this, but that's certainly the possibility. Okay, good. Um, what, uh, uh, Tom, you have an extensive background in stem cell research as well. Um, what are your thoughts on, uh, on laser technology? Uh, as it pertains to uh, mobilization of stem cells? Well, laser technology has been around for several decades now. Um, it's very interesting because it's important to first of all begin by differentiating uh, the type of laser technologies that we're talking about here. So uh, conventionally, the majority of laser technology have been used in lasers that generate heat to modify different parts of the body. The lasers that we're talking about here are low-level laser irradiation. These are lasers that do not emit heat, but actually elicit different regenerative biological processes. So by regenerative biological processes, it has been known, primarily a research from Eastern Europe, um, shown that various frequencies of laser can accelerate wound healing. Now, molecular mechanisms of how a laser that does not generate heat 
would accelerate the healing of wounds, whether it's a burn wound or a dental wound or in the gingiva and the gum. And, and dentistry live lasers are being used right now when there is there are some on the market. But how they elicit these reactions of accelerated healing has been something that has been very much unknown. And this is why our company, uh, Medistem, is collaborating with Entus because from a scientific point of view, we've been very interested on treatments which are non-drug treatments that can help the bodies or augment the body's own ability to heal itself. So one of the things that entire scientists have pioneered is identifying some of these mechanisms, um, whether it's through a wet lab research or through historical literature review, and uh, the combination of both, obviously, um, identifying some of these mechanisms and what can, by which the low-level lasers, which are very innocuous and do not cause adverse effects, uh, can elicit these these uh, regenerative changes. I got a quick question. And, and this is kind of directed to, uh, to Dr. Carey. Is it, uh, as a clinician, I'm assuming that, that you see quite a bit of, uh, of uh, um, damage from COPD in patients that you work with? Yes, we do. And uh, currently, being an MD, um, treatments at this point, it seems to me like everything is focused at just treating symptoms. It's just purely symptomatic treatment, and, and frequently when the, the COPD is advanced, it's not effective at all. So there is a tremendous need to find um, some some form of a healing process um, along the lines that Dr. Eiting has discussed. Um, he mentioned that laser can generate heat, mm -hmm. it depends on the frequency, and he also mentioned that it's unknown how the healing of the tissue occurs, but mm, heat generate special environment in the tissue that will attract the cells that take part in uh, 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 repair, tissue repair, mm -hmm. such as macrophages, neutrophils, and other cells. Uh, so just, just using labor, laser in a certain area will attract those cells, and if there is a damage, these cells will try to repair the damage. So, of course, we'll be doing the studies in, in the lab to find out if this is the case, but uh, this will be one possible mechanism, and the second one is that every tissue, lung, heart, liver, has tissue-bounded stem cell. Mm. Okay. It's called adult stem cell, and these stem cells are reside in a small frequency, but, but the hypothesis is that they are there because if there is a damage, they can actually go to the organ and repair the organ. That's the main question of regenerative medicine. So the question is, how can we stimulate those stem cells? How do we mobilize them? Exactly. How we mobilize them from their niche and how to move them to action. We have and to sort of reach out and wake them up and say it's time to go to work. Exactly. And laser could do that, possibly. Okay. Good, good, good. Um, and not, not to interrupt on the, on the laser thought, but it's just occurring to me that at this point, it seems to me that for some reason there's no focus among all these companies that are working with COPD in working towards a cure or a regenerative medicine approach to it, there's just a tremendous focus on, on uh, uh, treating symptoms. Thoughts on that? Any particular reason? That's, that's very true. I mean, this is, this is the truth about medicine in general, that it treats symptoms, that does not look for the cause or look for the cause to really alleviate the problem. So. Uh, Stem cell, um, stem cell approach um, shifts that. And laser approach is very novel and non-toxic because it provides a, a so-called frequency treatment, light treatment. Um, if we could go to the dish and show that we take cells, stimulate them with laser and biology changes, we, sh we could start generating disease models quickly. The other, the other issue in COPD is, is this is a multifactorial disease. It's not a type of disease like cystic fibrosis where you have one gene causing one specific type of exactly. manifestation. Mm -hmm. COPD is a disease which contains an autoimmune component in the sense that the immune system is attacking different things on the lung. It contains a low-level ongoing inflammatory component and 